City Spotlight is supported by Consolidated Communications. CCI is honored to salute the cities and their leaders in the area, as well as providing TV, internet, and phone service to local homes and businesses. We live where we work and are proud to support the communities we serve. More information available at Consolidated.com. Welcome to City Spotlight, where we're focusing on the communities in East Central Illinois. Today we're talking about Arcola, and with us today is the Mayor of Arcola, Larry Ferguson, and the City, city Administrator, Bill Wagner. Gentlemen, welcome. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you for coming down from Arcola today. Uh, before we get started talking about what's going on in Arcola, tell us a little bit about yourself. We'll start with you, uh, Larry. Okay. Well, I actually uh, grew up down in Great Edmund, Toledo and went to Cumberland down there and graduated in 74. Moved to Arcola about 78, so I've been there over 30 years. And um, actually, I've uh, been in the insurance business for over 20 years. And uh, that's that's about all about me. Okay. And. Uh, Bill, tell us a little bit about yourself. I was born and raised in Arcola. I got away a little bit for school. I came here to Eastern. I uh, graduated with an uh, undergraduate degree in 99. I did my master's and finished here in 2001 in political science. Excellent. Well, well welcome back to Eastern. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, both of you guys have Central Illinois ties, so that's, that's excellent. Um, Larry, let's talk a little bit about you. You've uh, been involved with the city government of Arcola for about 15 years now. What well, can you recall the state of Arcola was like uh, when you first became a, uh, a city council member? Well, I think, um, you know, back in 99 was when I was approached to uh, run for council. Really didn't know much about what was going on in Arcola. I had some prominent businessmen come and talk with me and, and decided to run, so I really didn't know what the state of Arcola was, was in. Uh, I think when you, you know, you're, you're just part of the being a citizen there, you just, you know, you go to work and you come home and, and you really don't know what's going on. And, but when you come, become a part of it, and then you kind of learn the inner workings of how, how city government is and just what, you know, what's going on in town. And, um, you know, there was a lot of things we needed to look at, a lot of financials. I was on the finance committee and, and put on there and, and other committees. And you see the inner workings. And, and I saw some places where we could really uh, improve uh, insurance wise and do some cost cutting and things of that nature. So uh, that was kind of my role at that time is just to kind of learn, you know, what city government was about, you know, what was in place. And, you know, that's really kind of how I took off with, with that part of my, my career, I guess, is in politics, so. And you've been mayor uh, for about 10 years now? About 10 years, yeah. Actually, I, had, I was acting mayor for a year, had a dual role. Uh, I was acting mayor for a little over, over 12 months and was a council member at the same time. Uh, and that was kind of difficult. And I took, took on that role. I had a lot of things I wanted to work on as acting mayor and then decided to go ahead and, and run, uh, you know, for a full term and ended up for another full term. And then now I'm working on my third full term. So uh, a lot of things have, I think have changed for, for the better because we have a lot of good people involved. So that's, that's kind of my background in that respect. Okay. And, uh, and Bill, you've also been, uh, you've been uh, part of the city for 10 years as well. So you've been together, together about the same time as him being mayor. Uh, what are some of the things that have transpired in the past decade that maybe uh, positive light on Arcola? What, what has transpired in the last decade or so that you'd like to bring up? I think we've had a, a, a lot of development in our community. Um, you know, or in the early 90s, mid 90s, we we're a real heavy industrial um, build out. And here in the last 10 years, we've been more commercial, um, getting some retail brought in, services brought in, things that we didn't necessarily, you know, have before. Okay. Anything else you'd like to add? Well, you know, back in the, you know, in the, in the, basically the mid 80s and 90s or so, we had a lot of housing going on. And, you know, that seemed to st have stopped. You know, it stopped at that point. And I think it maybe did elsewhere too. But, uh, you know, like Bill, I want to, you know, compliment Bill on what he's been able to do with a lot of, you know, working with a lot of businesses and, and, and to get those t types of things developed. But, um, it's the, the housing is, you know, kind of really is kind of slowed down, but I think uh, at this point in time, I believe it's coming back. And uh, that's really exciting to see that because, you know, we, we want to grow in a population, which we did. I think we grew over almost 10% in our last census, which is really good. So that means that we have some more housing, you know, we need more, more homes and we've had some development in that respect. But I think the home, uh, home building is, is coming along. I think I've heard, you know, some more building, uh, permits have been out, you know, coming into City Hall and things of that nature. So things are getting better in that respect. I think that's, we need those, we need those homes so we can actually have more population and our school will actually benefit from that also. More numbers and we'll, we'll talk about a little bit about the housing in a little, little bit. Sure. Um, we're into 2015. It's still very early in the new year. 
Um, any changes to any of the laws, codes, or regulations in the city of Arcola that uh, can be brought about here? The one thing that I think, as far as laws go, I know that you know the gambling you know came in into play, and I know some. Uh, I think Urbana's. I uh, can't remember which which uh, community up there to, didn't allow that the, the gaming, but you know we actually had to change some ordinance to allow the the, the game. You know, the, actually the machines to come into those establishments. So that was a law that actually was you know. We actually made it to where it was it was legal to have those type of machines, you know, in our, you know, in our the the, the businesses that were, you know, permitted. So we, we made that made that change. So, okay, let's talk about uh, economic development and uh, what would you say the current status of that is, and what are you guys looking forward to here in the future as far as improving that in our core? Green Mill Village has kind of been our our, our big project since 2007. It really. Um, was a slow start then, but um, we've got a hotel out there. They're adding a uh, live theater this year um, with Blue Gate Productions. Um, it'll be a, a Amish romance novel based, um, kind of a comedy a musical, and uh, it's uh, they're going to start in June. We hope there's a good run with that, and then their intent is to hopefully start this fall on an actual theater. Right now, it's just going to be in the convention center portion of the hotel. But uh, you know, once the theater comes in. It'll add some additional retail out there, and we're hoping to, you know, I'd like to see two or three more businesses mm -hmm. built out there over the next couple of years. What kind of feedback have you gotten from people about uh, that addition there on well, the? I think uh, the, you know the the hotel is is a, a jewel, you know, within our community, and and I think within the I guess the nation, I think they they hit uh, some type of within the last two years they've been the number one in 22,000 hotels as far as is, is their compliments and you know what the feedback is and their occupancy and, and things of that nature. It's just a wonderful facility. But then back behind that we have the Carriage Crossing which is a sister living facility and that is a, in my opinion a five star resort. Uh, you know with, with a lot of I see a lot of our, our seniors that's retired there and it's a really wonderful place so that it, that gives that that effect out there when you do go by the interstate you do see that also behind and then you know when this uh, theater's built and some other other things that, that's coming down the pike you know that's going to be even more of an attraction towards that side of town and before it used to be I think we have do have a uh, Sitco gas station is still it's barren right now but you know we're looking to, to maybe get something done there and, and it can be attraction on that side also. Um, our, our commerce is basically focused on around the interstate we've got several properties there um, you know it's a high volume area as far as traffic there's 22,000 cars a day that go down either north or south in the interstate so you know, about a third of them actually stop in Arcola on a daily basis. So if we can capture a few more of those, that's that's dollars free to our community. And I was going to ask you a co in a couple questions about that, but let's talk about the business you get from the interstate. People stop, they get gas, they, they have the lodging there in Arcola. Mm -hmm. um, how much of your efforts do you focus on the business around the traffic that does stop off the interstate? I don't know that we do anything special to focus on it. Um, I, I think we just make sure we have a, a nice exit um, and we've worked with some retailers to have a good offering there. Um, you know, I think it was a big deal for us to get a McDonald's in 2012. Um, yeah. That's, some, that's mm -hmm. something newer people yeah. people have noticed you, that. You're, you're on the map when you get a McDonald's, let me tell you. But it's, so. it's something when you're dri driving on the interstate Absolutely. or you're driving through Arcola. Wait a minute, when did that come there? Mm -hmm. So um, yeah. that's just something new to, to Arcola. Yeah, it, it, and the thing about it is it's, it's an easy off and easy on, I guess you might say. That can be good and bad because they do come in, maybe get fuel and then back right off, but but it is an easy easy exit, which makes it really nice because uh, you're not trying to figure out how to get over to here and you know and, and that type of thing. So, you know, the you know, with the McDonald's, you know, I know the uh, the Dairy Queen was concerned and I think it took a little bit of a hit to start with, but but I think with that it actually it, it's come back up and I think, you know, competition's good. So, you know, that complemented I think the whole thing. And then actually within that same building, you know, we have the the Champion Fitness, which is a rehabilitation, you know, type facility, which is really, you know, a plus. It, you know, things in, in that nature where we can plug those pieces in, in those spots where it was barren, really it makes it attractive when you do come into town, so. Okay, and once you come into town, you have downtown Arcola. Mm -hmm. And uh, kind of, you know, when you drive through downtown Arcola, you have a little bit of the nostalgia. You drive on the brick road and you have some of the older businesses in Arcola. Talk a little bit about those older businesses and the importance of those staying and continuing to be a part of Arcola. Well, I think, you know, we did a comprehensive plan. I think you and I talked about that earlier, but we were trying to figure, you know, trying to have an idea how to get traffic downtown, 
you know, because you do have a little bit of a drive, you know, down, th you know, 133, and then how do you get them, you know, downtown to see our beautiful downtown area? We have a lot of nice buildings, and you know, that was kind of we're trying to figure out how to get that, get those people downtown to do, you know, to to enjoy that setting that we do have. Um, you know, we actually have the, you know, the TIF program, which we actually had a storefront grant which helped you know, a lot of building down, downtowns and made beautified a lot of the, the older buildings and, and helped with structures also, um, you know, which really is a nice attraction. Uh, briefly touch upon uh, Arcola being kind of an entranceway to the Amish area. Um, what, uh, what impact does, uh, do you see from Arcola being kind of that, to get to the Amish area, maybe to Arthur, um, what, what, any impact there? What can you talk about that in any way? Um, it's, it's a big tourism draw, absolutely. Um, I don't know if we've ever quantified the, the impact of that, but uh, I know we have a lot of stores that offer Amish furniture and Amish related goods, so we're kind of a, an outlet for some of these you know, home businesses, for lack of a better word. Um, but, you know, we see, I think uh, we sell a lot of furniture. You see mm -hmm. that in our sales tax um, and the, the hotel even. Um, sourced the, their furniture, all the the headboards, the nightstands, the desk. That's all sourced locally uh, from Amish craftsmen. So it, it's a good tie-in to our our business. So. Okay, let's break away from the economy a little bit, and we'll, we'll get back to that and the tourism and uh, working with other communities. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Let's talk about the buildings, the infrastructure in Arcola. Do we see any uh, modifications, facelifts to any of the buildings in Arcola, in and around Arcola? Our downtown's always. Um, a concern, I guess. A lot of the buildings are, uh, we have one whole block that's over 120 years old, so it's, uh, it needs constant attention. And, um, you know, so you need some resources to help support that. And, you know, a mom and pop shop can't necessarily take on some of these, these challenges that they, the buildings are just dated. Um, a lot of them are brick buildings, so they need tuck pointed, uh, they need shored up structurally. You can always update electrical, um, those kind of things. So, um, I think our challenge over the next 10 years is to help boost those up. They, they look pretty in the front, but they, they need some work. Um, let's touch upon roads. Uh, obviously, the state takes care of uh, the roads that people travel on to get in and to around Arcola 133 and US 45. But some of the inner roads in Arcola, do you see any work that's going to be done on those uh, this coming year? That's a, constantly a challenge. Um, our maintenance funds have stayed steady over the last 10 years, but our our costs for oil and rock have, you know, went up three and four times. So it's, you're doing less at a higher cost. And so we've had to prioritize projects. Uh, we've had to look for alternate ways of funding projects. And, uh, you know, it's just, you have to work with what you have available. And one thing you notice about Arcola is the uh, brick mm -hmm. when you drive on that. And that's, uh, that's, that's pretty cool because you don't see that in a lot of communities. Is there, what is the upkeep on the, on the brick? What challenges do you have with that? Because I, I know that's a, that's a wonderful part of our color when you get the drive on that in the downtown area. It's a good and bad. Yeah. Yeah, they've been there for, you know, 100 plus years and, and they deteriorate and you, you try to do the best. I think they're a two layered system. And, you know, to repair those, you have to have, you know, other bricks to, to go in there. Um, you know, it's a, it's a charm. Uh, we have, you know, it's a very, very, very costly, uh, um, thing to, to, to maintain them, you know, or repair them or replace them. So, you know, we, we've got, we really love to keep the bricks. I know we've had to do some overlays and had to do some covering up or some bricks, but um, it's just really expensive to keep, to maintain those in, into a good, you know, a good surface to drive on. And I know people, they love them and hate them at the same time. Mm -hmm. So it's a charm, but it's, it's, it's kind of hard to drive on at times because of, they, they deteriorate pretty, um, pretty bad. Anything else to add on the uh, stru infrastructure in Arcola as far as buildings? Anything else to noteworthy? Um, we're always trying to improve our drainage. Um, we're relatively flat in Arcola. I think there's about six foot difference between the highest point in town and the lowest point in town. So, um, you know, it, it, that makes for good farm ground, but it's, you know, when it rains, you have to be able to get the water out. So we've spent probably... We've spent over two and a half million dollars yeah. over the last, well, it was mainly probably in the 2004, 2005. 2005 time, and we first we, we uh, did the uh, west side of town and got that in good shape. We had a few dollars left that we could spend, and we took that over on the east, the southeast side of town, and helped those 
a resident is out and tremendously also. So that, I think, you know, what happens is, is you, you know, when, when you had water laying everywhere, puddles before, or roads flooded, and now you don't, you forget what it used to be like, because we still do have some issues because we are very flat, but those people, you know, on the west side and the south, the, the southeast side have, have really benefited, which, you know, needed to be, but that was a lot of dollars spent, but we, we needed to spend those dollars. Yeah, and there's a, uh, we were fortunate enough to get a grant this year for a sanitary sewer improvement project on the north end of town. And while we have everything basically torn up, put sanitary sewer in, we'll rework the storm sewer there as well. So that'll be our next big project for the summer. And the roads. <laughs> roads, yes. Yeah. And the which roads. Which would be good, which would be really good. I mean, that's what's back in the 50s, I think, when that subdivision was built. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, needs some, some attention. So that's a good thing. All right, let's move on to festivals. And when you say Arcola, you think of the Broomcorn Festival. We're approaching the 45th one this coming September. Um, I'd like to hear from you guys uh, what it's like when the Broomcorn approaches, the anticipation, planning. Uh, what does it mean for Arcola and what does it do for Arcola? The, the planning stages are, are now, it's a, it's a 10 month you know, build out for the committee that volunteers for that project and um, really the city's kind of hands off as far as they plan the events, they, they recruit the entertainment, um, they organize the vendors. We're just there to support. We pick up the trash, we sit out the traffic barricades, we make sure that the traffic flow is, is proper and we help with security as far as the, the police department. But I think that's probably what makes it more successful is we aren't there dictating how they have to do things and run things and that makes the festival more organic. It grows, they add things, they take things away. We're there in support. I mean, really, you know, we, we spend uh, probably about ten to twelve thousand dollars a year to help the, the function. Uh, you know, do we capitalize on that in in having the festival? Probably not, but but that's that's okay. You know, we get people into town. You know, probably sixty sixty five thousand through a through a weekend if it's a good you know good weekend Friday through Sunday. Uh, the entertainment is is free. Uh, you know, there's a lot of great vendors, a lot of things that go. The parade is awesome. You know, we got the world famous Lawn, lawn Rangers through there. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of great bands come through, uh, a lot of politicians, of course. Um, you know, it's a great, uh, three o'clock on a Saturday, if you want to move around Arcola, you best just move to the parade because you're not going to get anywhere. Um, so it's a great time. A lot of great artists have come through, um, you know, the, the, the music venue there, Garth Brooks and, and several others that, you know, uh, so we've been very fortunate to find some talent before they got real big, <laughs> which is uh, which has been pretty nice. But the festival is really important. I, I think it's important to get people to town because they they'll see shops and things that may not be open that they'll come back to. So it's uh, the chamber does a great job. They the volunteers is, is second to none. They just do a really really like Bill said. It's a ten month planning process and they devote a lot of time to it. And it's a success every year. And no one gets paid for that. I mean it's all. You know, volunteer hours, a lot of sweat and uh, tears and frustration for some people. But uh, quickly, which uh, one, not that you want to single out one thing with the broom corn, but one one thing that you look forward to as a part of the broom corn every year. I'm always a big fan of the parade. It's just uh, so many people in town for that. It's it's very captivating. It's I think they had 120 entrants one year, and it, you know, with the Clydesdale horses a couple years back, that was just that was huge. marvelous. I mean, just amazing to see that. I uh, I like the right next to City Hall, two vendors down the hamburgers. That, <laughs> that's what I look forward to every year. So, that's I'm a food guy. So yeah. I second on the yeah. parade. Yeah. I, I've I've been a part of the yeah. parade, uh, uh, being in high school band right. and wonderful time. Great yeah, atmosphere. I enjoy the parade too, but I I like the hamburger there. <laughs> hey, I like a good burger as yeah. well. All right, another thing Arcola is kind of known for is uh, Raggedy Ann and Andy. And I understand it's uh, celebrating 100 years and there's a kind of a celebration this summer going on? Yeah, they're gonna have a, a, a big dinner. They have a gathering every year of, of collectors that come in from all over the United States and, and they loosely form together and have their own little swap meet. They trade dolls out of motel rooms and <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's very entertaining. Um, but this year we're gonna be a little more organized with it. We've got a couple people in town um, that are going to organize a big dinner and a birthday celebration. We'll have a huge cake. And uh, Johnny Grill was born in Arcola. His granddaughter, um, Joni Wanamaker, actually still lives in town and her husband, Tom, and they're kind of the, the big anchor that brings people back. And uh, 
they operated the museum for a number of years before they kind of got into their retirement age, so they stepped back a little bit. But uh, you know, people still come in, still very excited about the doll. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's going to be a special edition anniversary doll that the uh, manufacturers can have available for the event. So, well, those are two things that Arcola, you can say, is, is kind of famous for. Are there any other things that you'd like to highlight? Um, well, we have. Uh, I, I think the, this is will be the third annual probably car show. Yes. Uh, they're doing, and I think that was to start with Bill. I think that was to help uh, raise funds for the uh, the Wall Dog event, and uh, that's coming up. It's a really nice show. Um, and uh, we have 80 to 100 cars come in, and uh, it's it's a short-lived day, but it's really it's 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 a nice uh, nice event that comes to town. So that's a that's a plus. I don't know it if there's anything be, else. It seems to be growing. Um, people like to have their classic cars displayed on Main Street with the brick streets and mm -hmm. the the old globe lights, and it, it makes for a nice picture. And it's a nice event for our downtown uh, car show. People are very, I guess, uh, proud to display their wares. So. They actually give you money for them to park their car on your street, so it's a <laughs> it's a win-win for some of our local organizations too. So, yeah. our time is moving fast, so let's get to the last couple of questions here. I uh, understand Arcola has gone green, and that's something, Bill, uh, that you can talk a little bit about. Sure, I think um, you know over the past handful of years, the the grant money has been geared towards um, green technology, and we've been looking for ways to upgrade some of our facilities and save on our bottom line and it matched up with the grant funds that were available so we were able to um, do good both ways with that and uh, you know we put solar panels on City Hall um, we've added a wind turbine at our sewer plant we've put in variable speed drives on all the equipment we can so that it's more efficient we've upgraded the lights um, it was kind of reaffirming for us and last fall we got an award from uh, Governor Quinn for recognizing our efforts so yeah. Um, you know, we're the original green community with the Amish, so uh, we're trying to stretch our dollar like everybody else. So. Excellent. Um, Mayor Ferguson, you uh, talk, wanted to talk a little bit about the tipped extension, mm -hmm. something you guys have been working on for a number of years, and maybe just for those at home, what is TIFT, and then kind of go into what, what transpired. Actually, it's assistance, you know, when a, a business wants to come to town, or actually an existing business, um, it helps with, with grant dollars to uh, either build new or to, to uh, do a remodel, a facelift, that type of thing. It helps get, getting off of square one with a new business or it basically helps a business. Just like Bill talked about earlier, some of the older businesses downtown with infrastructure problems and things of that nature. Helps with the matching funds to, to allow them to do those type of things. It's a great tool that, to attract businesses, which we was, that's how we were able to do Green Mill Village to start with. Uh, we have a lot of other you know, businesses that we've done. I bet we've done over 100 I imagine 100 uh, TIF applications and grants, and uh, so it's been a been a great tool for us. And it runs out in 23 years from the first uh, TIF district that was started. And in that respect, we actually we can extend it for uh, for 12 years. And we have a lot of growth we need to continue on with. And we have uh, uh, surrounding communities that have that tool, so we really need that also. And we just signed off, got signed off our last uh, taxing body signed off. Uh, a week or so ago, so now Bill and I can take that to the state and see if they'll approve that extension and then we can continue on for the next 12 years within a certain uh, two different districts we have that we're going to maintain to help help that growth. So very exciting in that respect. So I'm, I'm happy that that's, uh, we got that taken care of. To take care of our other taxing bodies, our schools are our main priority in that respect with that, uh, with the redevelop or with the uh, intergovernmental agreement. And kind of the last thing I want to talk about here, you had mentioned that uh, Arcola is working with outside communities, something that you had talked about, uh, is that small communities kind of can kind of grow together. Uh, yeah. Explain what that is. Yeah, I want to talk about that right, and then I'm going to pass that on to Bill. But, um, you know, when I first became mayor, was, you know, I noticed that there was, you know, a lot of things going on in different communities that we weren't a part of, didn't know about. Uh, we were on, a, everyone was seemed to be on an island and, and you can't do that in today's economy. So, you know, I reached out with, uh, to, you know, surrounding communities and worked on some things together and then kind of passed the torch to Bill and I'd like for him to talk about what's, what's going on with that uh, in our Bill? today's world. We have a kind of an arrangement with Arthur, Sullivan, Tuscola, um, Douglas County and Moultrie County and we work, kind of pull some of our resources together to, uh, to build on the Amish community in our area. So. Um, we developed a new website, uh, Amish Country of Illinois, or Amish, Illinois Amish Country, and uh, we've got a logo that we're going to 
on March 12th, we're going to uh, have a big open house at Green Mill Village, and we're going to go over what we've done with this. Um, basically, it's it's been a good tool to gain investment from the state as a partner in helping to market our region. Um, you know, we all have limited budgets to advertise our cola, Arthur and Tuscola and Sullivan. So when we come together, we're able to leverage additional dollars from the state um, to, to try to bring a brand to our region. You know, you go to Door County, it's Door County, but there's nine different communities involved. Well, we hope that only Amish country is, you know, you know where it's at, but you go to Arthur and Arcola or wherever and, and, and spend a couple, two or three days. You know, it can't be a, a one day experience. Um, you're trying to build that. And then you get your sales tax from that and you add additional service businesses and, you know, it's a good f tool for the local economy. Well, gentlemen, I believe our time is up. I'm sure there's some other things we'd like to talk about uh, maybe in a future episode or so. We can okay. revisit some things and some additional things. So uh, Mayor Larry Ferguson, City Administrator Bill Wagner, thank you for coming on City Spotlight. We appreciate your time here. Thanks for having thank us. You. And now let's take a look at some of the upcoming activities going on in Arcola. City Spotlight is supported by Consolidated Communications. CCI is honored to salute the cities and their leaders in the area, as well as providing TV, internet, and phone service to local homes and businesses. We live where we work and are proud to support the communities we serve. More information available at consolidated.com.